So this screen talks about running for president. There's typically four phases to running for president. You have to announce that you want to be the president. You have to go through a certain amount of requirements by the Federal Election Commission in order to certify that you are going to be a candidate on the ballot around the country. Number two, you run for the party's nomination. Number three, run in the general election. And then hopefully number four, be elected. We'll tackle the Electoral College with some other resources. I typically draw this timeline up on the board in order to help kids understand the timeline of the election year. Keep in mind that the election campaign typically starts way before the actual year of the election and that even though we're going to start this with that concept of January 2020 of an election year, this could apply to any year. We know living in April of 2020 that candidates started campaigning for president long before the first of the year occurred, but that the official election year begins in January with primary and caucus contests. You may have remembered a few months ago that Iowa and New Hampshire held two of the first contests to narrow down each party's candidate for the presidency. This part of the phase is known as the primary phase, and the primary phase is difficult because one has to convince individuals of their own party that they are the person for president. So when you're a Democrat running against other Democrats, it's really difficult to distinguish yourself as somebody who's unique and right for the party. Same thing for Republicans. Then we go on to have something called Super Tuesday, where many states, maybe 15 to 30 different states, depending on the year, can have their contests. And after that day, if you're not winning or coming in in the top three, you're probably going to drop out of the race. So you might want to pause and just copy down this timeline, and then we're going to go through some of the steps together. So moving on to the Iowa caucus, I chose some photographs just to give you an idea that Iowa is a conservative state in general that has a state fair in the summer. Iowa has a big state fair where all the candidates descend upon the state in order to go literally from high school weight room to local library to someone's living room or backyard to campaign. They also go to the state fair and on the left hand side you see about 20 mason jars that are all affiliated with different candidates and people go by and put a corn kernel in the jar. It's very, very, very Iowa. On the right hand side, you'll notice that these are candidates getting up close and personal with people from Iowa, flipping burgers, eating corn dogs, baking chicken on the grill. We have Bernie Sanders, Pete, Pete Buttigieg. Both of those photos are from this past summer. And then we have Mitt Romney going into the 2012 election. Iowa in general is a more conservative state than the country, so the Iowa caucus is a really difficult contest to actually determine who the Republican nominee is going to be for president. It's a little bit more uh, predictive of the Democratic nominee, but overall, Republicans tend to choose somebody in this race that's more conservative than the general population in the Republican Party. You'll notice that in 2008 and in 2016, there were individuals that finished first, Mike Huckabee and Ted Cruz, that didn't go on to be the party's nominee. That's just representative of the fact that those individuals appeal to a more conservative audience. And one could argue that they were, in fact, more conservative than that year's eventual nominees in 2008, John McCain, and in 2016, Donald Trump. Going back to Iowa and why the caucus is such a big deal is that the Iowa caucus is an in-person event. Typically, it's on a weeknight, 7 o'clock. People have to go to their local library or high school, and they have to in-person vote with their feet. They walk to certain regions of a building or a room to indicate who they'd like to vote for. Number one, what if you have a job, illness, child care, or travel plans that preclude you from participating? Therefore, the Iowa caucus is really limited in taking the temperature of how Iowans actually really feel. Having said that, because the Iowa caucus is typically the first contest in election years, a lot of Iowa shuts down so that people can participate. And people take it pretty seriously and they participate as much as they can, but that still means that there's people that are locked out of it. Number two, a lot of people dislike the public nature of voting in Iowa, and people prefer primaries. Primaries feel a lot more like a regular election where people just walk in, 
they privately vote by pen or paper in a voting booth and then they leave. The New Hampshire primary is typically the first primary and it's usually right off the heels of the Iowa caucus. In this year, both races in 2020 were in February. I chose a couple of photos from 2008, 2012, 2016 to show how the New Hampshire primary is a contest where there's many people running for president. And I chose this one from 2020 because you all might be familiar with these individuals. There wasn't really much point in showing you photographs of Republican signs from 2020 because there wasn't much of a contest because we have an incumbent president. This photograph is actually really famous of Hillary Clinton because this was in 2008 when she was running against Barack Obama. They were both senators at the time and bitter, bitter rivals. And the race was really tight because she was predicted to win Iowa, but Barack Obama won. In this coffee shop in New Hampshire, she actually is moved to tears when answering a question from, an, from a, um, a New Hampshire resident. And the media really portrayed this as evidence that this is how why a woman can't be in charge because they could be emotional. Well, Hillary Clinton actually went on to win the New Hampshire primary. So that actually set the tone for 2008 being a really, really tight race between Obama and Clinton. And it didn't really get settled who the nominee was going to be until way after Super Tuesday. You'll notice that in 2016, we have a clear victor with Donald Trump in the New Hampshire primary, whereas when we go back to the caucus results, it was much closer. Going back to the calendar, the next piece of the puzzle, after you have two presumptive nominees, a uh, Democrat and Republican, who are sort of the last person standing, the party conventions is where party delegates formally elect the candidate for the official nomination. So we're going to know that Joe Biden is the candidate going into the Democratic convention this summer, but this is where it's formally done. So human beings in the Democratic Party who are delegates that have been designated to go to the convention will actually cast a ballot. The other thing that will happen is that the vice presidential nominee will be formally announced. Then we reach the general election. The general election involves a lot of debates. Usually there's three televised debates and then there's also vice presidential debates. There's town hall meetings, and what that means is that typically networks like CNN or Fox or uh, NBC will host a town hall where they'll invite residents to sit in the audience. It's usually in a circular format, and they'll give the microphone to an individual, and that person will ask a question live. The election day is always the first Tuesday after the first Monday in November because that's what the Constitution decrees. There's actually a really cool TED Ed video about why we vote on Tuesdays, and I'm going to refer you to that for that one. But ultimately, it has to do with some old-fashioned customs that used to happen on the first of the month. Our two-party system is really, really reinforced by the Electoral College, and that is a topic for our next screencast and our next module. Party conventions, here are two photographs from 2016. We see Hillary Clinton holding hands with her vice presidential running mate, Tim Kaine, who's a senator from Virginia. And on the right-hand side, you see Donald Trump with Mike Pence on the right-hand side, his vice presidential running mate. And both of them are celebrating. There's lots of red, white, and blue. There's lots of balloons. The convention is kind of like a pep rally. And there you see photographs from 2016's presidential and vice presidential debates. Just remember that running for president takes a long time and it feels long for us, the audience, the voters, and it also feels long for the candidates.